Shut up, Meg. We are talking Meg 2, The Trench. And this one is directed by Ben Wheatley. I suppose Wheatley's most notable for the movie Free Fire, but he has a reasonable resume behind him. So this follows on from the 2018 movie The Meg, which was actually based on a series of novels by author Steve Alton. And he did a, a novel called The Trench, which I haven't read, to be honest with you. So I don't know how closely this resembles the actual novel. I suspect not all that much. Uh, but let's talk about it. So this once again stars Jason Statham. Now you may be surprised to know that Statham actually has a little bit of a pedigree for uh, starring in a kind of a water-based kind of action film. Before coming an actor, Statham actually uh, competed as a professional diver in the kind of the early 90s. Yes, it's true. Google it if you don't believe me. So here he is again, uh, this follows on a few years after the events of the original movie and we have a few kind of returning mass, uh, cast members, notably obviously Jason Statham as Jonas who is our kind of a, our protagonist and the setup now is, is that Jonas is a kind of like an eco-warrior kind of exposing companies dumping chemical waste and all this kind of thing and uh, you know he works in conjunction with this kind of um, marine Eco, you know, kind of eco conservation company that kind of want to explore the kind of the uh, where the Meg came from in the first maybe the kind of um, in the trench kind of thing. And uh, through a kind of series of events, we get a couple of submersibles go kind of beneath the trench, and they find out that there's this other company there uh, illegally drilling for kind of minerals under this kind of uh, uh, trench area. And, Things happen, and there a kind of a, uh, a rip is kind of made in this kind of uh, these kind of trench walls, so to speak, and a variety of creatures escape. And we also have our human bad guys who want to kind of cover up uh, the kind of the illegal stuff that they've been doing. Now, what will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So, let's discuss now. Before we get into what I think works and doesn't work, uh, we have to talk about the Chinese elephant in the room. So this is actually a co-production through uh, the US and China. So um, you actually really have two male leads here. You have the kind of the Western male lead in Jason Statham, and you also have a uh, kind of a new character, a Chinese guy who is a um, relation to the kind of one of the characters from the first movie. Now the first movie was also a, a, a co-production with China. Now, um, interestingly, you feel like this movie is somewhat made by committee, um, and I'm I'm going to speculate a little here, but you know we have to have a certain amount of lines that are delivered in Chinese kind of dialogue and things like this. We have to have a you know a couple of hero moments for our kind of our main Chinese character who gets to be honest with you. Uh, nearly just as much kind of screen time as Statham and nearly just as much kind of like heroic deeds on camera as well. So you can kind of see that the, the deal was made here between um, Warner Brothers, obviously the American company and the Ch Chinese production company, so that they kind of all appeal to both audiences. Because obviously uh, you know, China, Chinese people generally kind of support uh, homegrown uh, content more so than kind of you know, Hollywood sort of stuff. So you can see that they have certainly kind of written, uh, you know, uh, this hero character as a couple of kind of supporting characters to appeal to that. So I'm not quite sure how much of that was in the actual novel, if I'm honest. Like I said, I haven't read it, uh, but it's worth kind of pointing out. But it, it gives it this kind of uh, made by committee feel, I, I have to be honest with you. Um, but we'll come back to that. So let's talk about what I think works in this film. I do think um, the the final kind of 15 minutes is crazier and um, more kind of going on than the finale of the of the previous movie. Uh, we have three Megs on the loose now, plus a giant octopus, plus a few kind of uh, smaller kind of creatures that can somehow uh, live on land. We'll come back to them. Uh, so we have a whole host of kind of creatures and uh, multiple megs, including a giant one, even bigger than your regular megs, uh, to contend with. So we have those kind of creatures, but we also have a, 
uh, a threat in the kind of the human kind, which I don't think is such a kind of a, a, a good aspect, as I think it's been widely reported at this point. But the last kind of like, you know, 15 minutes for 20 minutes or so is, is pretty fun, I've got to say. You know, there, there, there's some kind of quite fun sequences. I really enjoyed the sequence where we have like kind of the camera in the kind of the Meg's mouth and you kind of just see it kind of chomping down on uh, on swimmers in this kind of you know in this kind of like resort area it does kind of end a little similar they kind of end up in this resort area just like they did in the kind of the first movie so it does feel like it's kind of re repeating some of the same beats but nonetheless i suppose that's the way you have to, you get lots of people in the kind of uh, in the ocean at any one time so that was uh, it was fun even though it was a little reminiscent of the original movie there's there's also a quite a good sequence where our characters are kind of walking on the kind of the ocean floor in the kind of the trench area and uh, you know there's various kind of like you know alien looking kind of sites sort of down there and that's when we get our kind of other main kind of like uh, sort of meg action scene to be honest uh, but again it's quite fun so you have an underwater kind of like uh, meg action sequence and then we have the kind of the one kind of at the um, you know at the end really so uh, what else can I say? I think Statham is, uh, you know, he plays Jason Statham in, in this movie. Uh, but, you know, if you're a fan of Jason Statham, then you will get a lot out of this because he just kind of plays like crank transporter. He's the same character, more or less. Uh, no one is ever going to accuse Jason Statham of subtlety in his acting, but you get what you're expecting, I suppose. Um, now, this movie really is a, a giant B movie. It really is. Now, it has been quite trashed uh, by the critics. I saw this on the Friday, but the, the RT score had already come out and it's pretty low. Now, on this channel, we appreciate B movies. We kind of like B movies. Uh, and this really does play like a large budget um, B movie. And there's actually a, a, a cool kind of like. Uh, Meg versus giant octopus kind of fight, very much like a certain kind of B movie that was kind of out years ago. Uh, so that was kind of fun to see. So I, I personally kind of liked the the kind of the B movie kind of schlock here. And you know, you you have to. This is where the budget comes in because the CGI and stuff is obviously considerably better than the kind of your your you know straight to kind of DVD or VOD kind of fare that you're going to going to get. So you are really watching you know, a, a B-movie, but with better kind of graphics and kind of higher kind of production value. So for a B-movie fan like me and probably a lot of you, this kind of stuff to enjoy here. You're kind of people who just want to watch mainstream stuff, I think will be put off by kind of some of the schlockiness because it really is schlocky, this movie. Uh, but the, the, for me, there's a certain amount of kind of guilty pleasure, so to speak, to be had from such a stupid movie. And let me tell you, this movie... It's dumb, but you know, at the same time, look at the other films you review on this channel. I'm just saying. Uh, <clears throat> so there, so there's that. Um, and I think the movie tries to have some variety in its action. Um, like I said, we have these various kind of creatures. We have a, a, a bunch of other kind of like um, dangers, shall we say, that these kind of group of protagonists are trying to face. And I think the intention here is to, well, I think it's twofold. I think one of it's to save money, but on the other side of it, the idea I think is to give us a variety in, in kind of different kind of sequences. It's not just fighting a shark for, you know, 90 minutes. It's, it's oh, there's a landslide. Oh, it's kind of bad guys with guns and there's fights and things like this. There's people to have shootouts with. Um, there's, you know, time sensitive kind of like emergency issues, stuff like that. So the movie is trying to give the, the audience a variety of different kind of like high tension kind of situations. I think for the most part, you know, that's not what probably audiences want. But, you know, I, I'll give it to the, to the movie for having, trying to have a, a little bit of kind of variety. There's some kind of funny lines here and there. And, you know, um, I quite like the music, I have to say as well. So what doesn't work? So I've already kind of mentioned some of the stuff. So as I've mentioned at the beginning here, you know, this movie does feel like it's made by committee. You know, you feel the producers on either kind of side of the kind of the uh, studios here have said, right, Statham, Statham needs to get this action scene and that action scene. This guy needs to do that, that and the other. And he needs to be heroic in these kind of scenes. And he has to have this kind of lines of dialogue and kind of Chinese, yada, yada, yada. So it really does feel like it's kind of a movie which has been made by... 
um, just a kind of a bunch of kind of suits deciding how to kind of divvy up the kind of the um, the shares of who does what between the kind of the US and kind of China uh, financiers and therefore who's who's doing what on kind of screen. Uh, so yeah, there's that as I've already mentioned. What else can I say? Uh, I mean, the movie is incredibly dumb. I mean, and, and I have to say as well, I mean, okay, let's park the fact we're talking about giant monsters here. We can, let's just, we can accept that. That's the premise. Fine. You know, I'm not going to say that stupid because that's what the whole film's about. But within the movie, I mean, it's not trying to be high drama, admittedly, but there are things here that you just think, oh my God, it needs to be smarter than this. I mean, everyone seems incompetent. Everyone. The antagonists, the protagonists, they all seem incompetent. Uh, for example, we have our, you know, our protagonists. They, they, at the beginning of the film, we actually find out they've got a captive Meg from the last movie. And, uh, you know, it's totally, it's totally secure. Breaks out the first, first time it, it, it tries. And they can surely, you know, incompetence. These people are meant to be like the, the cutting edge of, of science and stuff. We have them kind of going into a submersible, or going into a trench. And, oh, look, there's a stowaway aboard. Surely there would be a bunch of checks before you kind of sent off. Things like this are bad guys. Whenever they get, get I mean, the bad, this happens more than once. They'll get a, a, an opportunity to kill our heroes, to kill the protagonists. But no, they'll stand around kind of monologuing or just kind of standing around waiting for something. Even though in one sequence, for example, they've been told by their higher ups to kill the kind of the uh, insurgents. But they don't do it. They stand around waiting for the insurgents, our protagonists, to kind of make a move. And that's obviously kind of what happens. So it's just incompetence from all of the kind of the characters involved here. There's some horrible, cringy dialogue in this film. And it is delivered, unfortunately, by some quite bad actors. Now, Statham is playing Statham. That's fine. Uh, there's a couple of other kind of recognisable kind of character actors that you'll, you'll kind of recognise who I think do okay. But there's lots of kind of like clearly cannon fodder red shirts that deliver horrible dialogue. I mean, it is cringeworthy. These are like, have you, you know, have you ever done acting before? It is some truly terrible acting. Certainly for a, you know, a, a movie that is a major production. If this was on a big movie, you know, I'd maybe let it give it a pass. But you would expect better when you are having this amount of budget. You know, it just isn't good enough for the, um, for the actual what you're kind of getting on screen. Uh, I think one of the main complaints, as I've mentioned, is there's probably you know, too much kind of attention given to our human bad guys. Now, this is actually a tactic used by movie houses like The Asylum and like things like the Sci-Fi Channel. You'll have this premise and it'll have like a monster in it, but then they'll pad out the running time with kind of like human bad guys, like the Mafia, or in this case in the Meg, uh, a rival kind of like uh, company that's hired mercenaries. The reason being is they want to pad out the running time uh, with non-expensive kind of human actors rather than kind of chilling out for CGI monsters. So we still have a feature length movie with action, but they don't have to kind of like spend out on the uh, you know, the, the, too much on the kind of the creatures and stuff, but you can still see there's plenty of action kind of going on. So that's true of this film. And I think, you know, ultimately, you know, you're paying, and this is a larger budget movie, so I don't think you can get away with it as much as, like, you know, your sci-fi channel exclusives and things like that, because people want to see the Meg. Now, I do see the flip side of the coin. If you just had the Meg and it's the only thing they're dealing with, it might be a little samey. So I understand you want to have that little bit of variety. So I'm a little bit more forgiving than, than there's maybe some on the or, or this kind of critique. But I feel like it has to be uh, addressed. I mean, the other thing which kind of goes hand in hand is like, I recently reviewed the movie Black Demon, which is another Megalodon movie that came out earlier on this year. And that Meg was hardly in that film. Now, the sharks are in this movie a lot more than Black Demon. That kind of, it almost feels like it's a similar, in a way, it's kind of distracting you from the actual kind of creatures, having you having you this kind of ecological kind of message, the same as the Meg, maybe not quite as heavy handed as Black Demon. And uh, yeah, just giving you these kind of other things to deal with, you know, with this kind of like this ecological message, message man is bad, they're ruining the planet, we've got to do better. So it kind of like weirdly, um, feels a little bit like Black Demon in some way, but, you know, but it's better than Black Demon, I, I would suggest, you know, for the most part. But obviously it's a bigger budget film than Black Demon. So, you know, there it is. Um, it's, 
I don't think it's as good as the first one, although I'd say the finale is probably better. Uh, but the overall, the, the movie does, I think, suffer from being a little bit of a um, watered, watered down kind of corporate, kind of somewhat kind of soulless film in some ways. Um, I, I feel, I mean, I, there's a whole series of these novels by Steve Alton. I haven't read any of them, but if they do make a third one, which I suspect they probably will, uh, I think they need to change the formula, even if it means going off book a little bit, so to speak. I'll give it a 5 out of 10 because I do feel there is uh, some B-movie level enjoyment here to, to be had from this. Um, but it's, it, I, it's, I certainly can't give it a bad, that's like, I can't say it's good necessarily, but it's kind of like a, uh, you know, it's an average high budget B-movie. There you go. Uh, but if you're a B-movie fan, I think you still might enjoy at least some of it. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.